we have a fun job. Nah, that's a lie. We have a job to do on the <laughs> we have a job to do on the homestead today. Uh, we're going to be working with this pet safe. What is this thing called? Stay and play wireless fence. Today we're going to be setting up a pet safe stay and play wireless fence. This allows a dog, in this instance, our security dog, to roam the property, go wherever he wants within an invisible boundary that is wireless. It allows your dog to run around, but you don't have to do any trenching, you don't have to bury any lines. Today we're gonna to show you how to set this thing up and, uh, and start how to also start training your pup to it. Now just a quick word before you go and put this in for your dog. If you're training, for example, a hunting dog, you won't want to use one of these until your dog has been thoroughly trained for retrieving and for working in the field. So for example, I will not use this on Poppy until she's older and a hunting dog already because putting up an electric fence can um, kind of teach your dog not to explore and run and a hunting dog, you want to not be afraid to go exploring. So Poppy won't be getting trained to this. Bones could be trained to this. It wouldn't be a problem for him. And this is really for the security dog, the big German Shepherd that's on the property. We want him to be able to walk around keeping predators away, keeping unwanted people away, making sure he has free range over all our space and all our property. But he also has a tendency to like to go visit the neighbors over the other side of the hill and go wandering and so we don't want him to do that. Uh, my in-laws who own that dog want to contain him and so they asked me to help set up an electric fence for him and train him to it. So that's what we're gonna do today. We'll have links below for this system. Let's get started. Here's what this system comes with. You have this like main unit here. That's what sends out your signal. You plug that into your house. Also have these little white marker flags. That's to train your dog to the system so he has a visual indicator of where the border is. Over time, you will not need these white flags. You can pull them out. Uh, they're just there for training purposes. Comes with the pet safe collar, which will nick your dog if he gets close to the border. Once a dog is properly trained on the system, he will never be nicked because it beeps before it nicks. He will learn that the beep is the warning and he will never ever be nicked. So this is a really good way to contain your dog. You'll be keeping your dog safe, away from harm, away from being lost, not too hard to use, not too complicated. We're gonna start setting it up. When choosing a location to put your main base unit, you're going to wanna to pick a spot that's obviously inside, so it's out of the elements. It will shoot the signal through the walls of your house. The only thing that can mess up this signal is lots of metal. So, for example, this sunroom behind me has a big metal radiator in there. I am not going to put it in there. Where I'm actually gonna put it is, if you can see that little window behind me there, in that little nook, it should be able to shoot out of there, cover the whole property, what we want. And uh, so I'm gonna go bring this inside. It's plug and play. I mean, you just, there's your plug. You plug this into the unit, boop, and into the wall, beep. And I'll have it right there so you'll see me in that window. Okay, we're all set up in there. The next step to this process when you unbox, uh, you're going to take your, uh, your collar and you're going to have to charge the collar before you use it. So we're going to plug this into the wall, just let it charge. After that, what we're going to do, they have different size contact points. You see these little guys? For dogs with longer hair, like for example a German Shepherd, you're gonna use the longer contact points so you have better contact on the dog. So we're going to switch out these contact points. It comes with a little wrench right there to do that. Charge this unit and then in a little while once it's charged, we're going to test the perimeter, see if we're happy with that location and then we'll put the flags in the ground and we'll start training the dog. Okay, the way that you test your perimeter and mark it, you turn the transmitter on then you take this little indicator, put it up against your collar's receiver, and you walk. And as soon as this starts blinking, you'll hear the tone come on in the collar, and then you'll see this little red light blinking, showing you that it's doing the nick. Uh, that's where you put a little flag. And then you train your dog to the flags and the tone. After that, they'll respond to the tone and they'll never get nicked again, and they'll never escape and get run over by a car. So. To me, a couple nicks is worth saving your dog from getting run over by a car. So here's how this works. Here is our house. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. You put the transmitter in our house right there, okay? okay? And what the transmitter does in our house 
is it sends a signal out in a big circle like this, okay? A big circle, like an invisible force field, like in Star Wars, okay? And it shoots it out all over the property, okay? And so what we're trying to do, we walk away from the transmitter, and when we hear beep, 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 we put down, goodness, a flag. And then we go to the others up the hill. We walk up the hill, right? And then, beep, 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 And then we walk to the back of the house. Just like we did. And then, beep, 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 And then we walk to the other side of the house. Beep, 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 beep. And then what we're gonna do, if we like where the flags are, is we're gonna put flags in between them to make a full circle of flags. We have identified the four furthest points around the house. As I mentioned, we got two units. The first unit was good enough to cover the, the big house here. We'll use the second unit to cover our building and the barnyard. We have the full perimeter established now with the two units on. Now we're gonna just walk with this receiver. And as we walk, put flags in to mark the whole perimeter, and then we can start training the dog to fence. So let's work. We have our perimeter set up and now it's time to do our very first training session with the dog. It's important when you do this, you don't wanna overly stress your dog. You don't want to hurt him. You just want to teach him to respect the flags and the tone. And if you teach him properly, he'll never be hurt by this. So what we're gonna do, I got a pocket full of yummy dog treats. I have what's called a check cord, which is just a really long leash so I can give him some space and still control him. We're gonna walk up towards the border, the flags. He's gonna have this on him, and I'm not going to have it set to do any nick. It's just gonna be a tone today. When we get towards it and we hear the tone, I'm gonna give him a little pull, tell him to come, and give him a treat and tell him good boy for coming. Today we're just gonna do that, treats, flags. Quick 101 when you're teaching a dog anything with treats. Dog have, dogs have very short term memory for training like this. They can remember the different commands you teach them forever, uh, but they have a very short term memory for what they just did and then why you're rewarding them. So if I say sit and then a minute goes by and then I give him a treat, he doesn't remember why he's getting this treat. So make sure to reward good behavior very quickly, which means your treats are open and ready and you have one in your hand, so you can reward them within two seconds. Oh, come. Good cop, good cop. We heard the tone, I told him come, and then rewarded him for coming. I want to keep this very nice and happy. Dogs learn better when they're happy and things are going good. You don't want them scared or overstressed. Let's go. Let's go see another flag. Come. Good come. Good come. I wanted to answer a question I get from time to time while we're doing this video here. People see me working with my hunting labs training and while I'm working, he has free roam of this property. He's a security dog. Uh, he'll come over and they'll notice him in the background I'll say sit to my dogs and he'll sit. And then I'll give my dogs treats or I'll say come and, and he'll kind of walk on over and my dogs get treats and I don't treat this dog. And people will comment, well, why don't you give the shepherd love and you can show love to livestock guardian dogs and protective dogs too. And oh, don't ignore him. This isn't my dog. And unless the owners, who in this instance are my in-laws, ask me to actively train him for something and 
then give me an okay to give him treats and things, I don't do that. I'm not gonna give a dog that's not mine a bunch of treats. Some people have their dog on a strict diet, like my dogs, and if he's getting a bunch of treats that I don't know about and he's getting overweight, it'll affect his performance. So I'm not ignoring him. He gets love from us, he gets love from his owners, in a situation like this where I'm asked to train him something, I will give him treats. I respect the boundary of the dog owners, and that's why if you see me working with my dogs and he's nearby listening but not getting treats, that's why that's happening. It's not because I don't like this dog. Also, this dog is not being trained for livestock guardian. Uh, he's just a security slash companion shepherd here on the property. Uh, he would not be a good choice for protecting livestock right now because he has not been trained for that. Come. Good cop. Did you hear it? You saw the flag. Uh. Cop. He has not yet figured out the concept of hearing that beep, 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 and turning around and coming to me. He hasn't made the connection yet, which is okay. Day one of any training, you want it to be all happy, all good treats. You don't want to overburden him on day one when he's confused. We'll keep working over the next few days, doing the same kind of thing. We'll start to activate that neck so he actually is feeling a negative pressure on him. When he turns and comes back to us, it'll turn right off and he'll get a treat. And that'll speed up the learning process a lot. But today we did good and uh, we're gonna take him off. And for today, we're not gonna let him run around without the neck collar on him because then he'll go past those flags and he'll forget everything we worked on today. So for the rest of his time today, unless we're actively training him, which we'll do later, uh, he's going to be just here, chained up for a little bit, and uh, we'll just work over the next few days like this. Tomorrow we'll activate the Nick at the lower setting. We'll see if it affects him at the lower setting. Some dogs might need a higher setting for them to be affected by it. You never want to see your dog get nicked and yelp in pain. What you're looking for is a just barely them noticing the shock. So they're walking and all of a sudden they get nicked and maybe their ears go either up or down or they put their neck down. Just a slight change in their demeanor saying, ooh, what's that? Come, treat, that stops. Barely any sensation at all. Do it again. Ooh, what's that? Come, treat. Okay, when I walk away from those flags, that weird feeling stops. They're not yelping in pain. You're not being cruel or hurting your dog. A key when working with any kind of uh, nicking collar is that you're not setting it too high and hurting your dog. You never want to hurt the dog because they won't learn if they're being hurt and they're scared. It is day two of the training, the first day that we're gonna turn the collar on and actually have what they call the static correction or I refer to as a nick. You'll also hear a beep. And so today what we're going to do is have him on a long pull or check cord uh, so I can pull him away from the line when he needs to be directed in the right direction so the collar turns off which will teach him the proper behavior which is to hear the tone and come away from it. So we're gonna get started. The first important step to this training process is like any training process, starting it off with a little bit of fun, uh, letting the dog know that you like him, you're not trying to be mean. So we're gonna just play a little bit, ball, some treats, take a little walk, and then we'll get near the border. Come on, pup. All right, we're gonna go up on the hill where you see those, that, that border up there. I am going to be looking to see, I have him set to a power of two out of five. I'm going to look to see what his reaction is with the power of two static correction. Uh, that will tell me if I have this set correctly. I'm starting on a two with him because I know from past experience with this dog, uh, he's got a real thick fur and he's a big dog, and working with him in the past, I know he won't respond to a one. I don't think he'll respond to a two, um, but we'll see. It's always safer to start lower than too high. You don't want the dog to yelp, you don't want him to look like he's in pain. What you're looking for is just a slight change in attitude, just like, ooh, what's that? Hmm, I don't like that, maybe the ears go down. And then come, treat, it's all over, and a few days of that, and. He's totally trained and he's protected from getting hit by a car, which would be way worse than a little bit of a tingle on your neck. So let's go see. Hit. All 
I observed next to no reaction from level two. However, he did pay attention to the tone today and come back at the tone, which is really good understanding what I want him to do. Uh, but I do want to make sure that he feels the static correction because it's po important for him to know when I'm not here, he still should do this even though he doesn't get a treat. Come on, man. Go ahead. He's definitely not feeling a level two. I'm going to notch him up to a level three, and that should be all we need. So I'm going to do that now. Come on, pup. Good boy. Good boy. There you go. He's definitely recognizing the Nick here at level three. And no reason to go any higher. You'll notice he's not yelping. Uh, he, he slinks his body and he runs back quick, which is what we're looking for. So we're going to work the perimeter of this property, get him used to his boundaries, and we'll just keep doing that for the next couple days, and I don't think we'll need to keep him on a level three. He's totally understanding the, the concept now. So let's go to a different spot. Good boy. A few more days into our training here with this uh, wireless electric fence, and what we're going to practice today, you'll notice I have my dogs out and off leash. Everybody's peeing right now. <laughs> uh, we're going to see now with some distractions, some other dogs, a lot of activity, and the German Shepherd is going to be off leash. How he does and recognizing the beep when it happens, turning around and coming back. So this is kind of getting towards the end of training here. We're getting close to being able to just leave him be. He did really good last couple days and uh, we're getting almost to the point where we're done here. So he's being distracted, he's off leash. This is like the hardest part of the training. So let's see how he does. We've had our first off-leash correction. He was very distracted. He went way over the border and he got hit. It took a whistle to get him to come back towards me. So he's not there yet where he could be left completely by himself. But again, part of the training. So we're getting there. Let's try a new spot. Oops. This is a really good training because he wants to be with the other dog. Good boy. Good boy. See that? Really good. He's being distracted by the other dogs, then he's getting nicked, and then he's running home, which is exactly what you want to see. In a few more days, he'll never even be nicked because he'll notice that tone quickly and he'll turn and run. So this is, this is definitely working. I like what I'm seeing. Not done with training yet. A couple more days of supervision. Good boy. Doing good, doing good, yeah. It's been a couple of weeks of training with the Big Shepherd. Training's done. He's totally learned where his border is. He'll play with the other dogs within the border. He'll go up and greet people. He'll patrol the property, but he will not go beyond the border. We've exposed him to a number of different scenarios. Cars coming and going, ATVs coming and going, people walking in and out, dogs playing, balls being thrown and he's learned where he's safe to go and where he should not go. The last step of your training, and an important one if you have a big property and you like to let your dog explore and have some fun, is to train him when he is allowed to go over the border. The way to do that is to remove his collar, put him on leash in a vehicle, in some way make it a different way to walk over the border. Uh, I prefer to just put him on a leash, tell him okay, and walk him across the border. He won't get nicked. He'll learn when he's with you and you tell him it's okay, he can cross the border. And that way he can still have fun and run around and play with the other dogs, enjoy the property as a whole. And that's just what we're going to do today. 
take the pup for a walk, let him get some energy out, and then bring him home, again, walking him back home over the border, telling him again, it's okay. And we're pretty much done with training. He's learned how this works. It's not too complicated. It's a really nice product. I'll have a link below. If you use that link, it's an affiliate link. It helps support the show, but it doesn't cost you a penny extra. And uh, it's working great. So if you have dogs, security dogs, just recreation dogs that you like to be able to run around your property, but you don't want them escaping, getting hit by a car, getting lost, you know, that happens with dogs. Things spook them, they go running, or maybe they start chasing an animal. This is a really nice assurance, and once you train your dog to it, they will never get nicked again. They'll remember the tone, you no longer will even need to have this it set to a nick, and uh, yeah, it's a nice, happy way to keep your dog close to home without getting hurt and without getting lost. So now let's go for a walk with the dogs. He's all trained. We tell him okay as we come back over the border. And uh, then we put his collar back on so he gets his tone when he gets near it. And he gets to have fun, gets to run and play, never gets nicked again, respects his border. Really, really good way to train a dog to an area, let him run around around his core area, but not get him lost. Link below for the product. And before I end this video, there's something that I have to do because I know people are going to say, oh, that's cruel and you should never do that to your dog and I'd like to see you put that collar on and get nicked. So ready? One, two. That's the lowest power setting. I'll put it up against my neck. Oh, I'm getting checked right now. So the collar is on and now it's on my neck. And this is to show, not that I'm like some idiot doing a stunt on YouTube, uh, this is to show that this does not hurt your dog. Ready? Walk with me so you can hear it. Ooh. And that's what happens. <laughs> your dog goes, ooh. Now if I had that set to the full highest setting, yeah, that would hurt. But that's why you don't set it to the full highest setting for your dog. You set it to the extent, right now it's on the lowest setting because I have bare skin there. If I go, hmm, that's uncomfortable, and I take a step this way, that's exactly what's gonna happen to your dog. If you don't put it on the highest setting, you start on the lowest setting, you look for the first example of the animal going, oh, that's uncomfortable. And that's as high as you need to go with this nick. It does not have to hurt your dog. I wouldn't do it if it hurt my dogs. I don't like hurting dogs. I love my dogs. You want a little bit of discomfort, which encourages them to come back home where they get a treat. It's not a big deal, okay? So I did it to myself. It's okay to do to your dogs. If you plan on purchasing any of the equipment you saw in this video, use the links below. And if you plan on doing any shopping on Amazon, use our Amazon link right here. You'll be forwarded on to Amazon. We get a bonus for sending you there and it helps support our show without costing you a penny extra. We thank you for your support.